today we are at Epcot and we're finally eating at a place that I've been wanting to eat at for how long has it been open? Two years? Something like that. Never been able to get a reservation. And that restaurant is Space 220. It's the one at Epcot recently opened. It's all about space and it's very hard to get a reservation. Although I've heard if you just walk up, you're more likely to get one than search online. But one popped up this week and we finally get to go. Let's go check it out. Now our reservation is for 520. It's about 508 right now. Uh, it says on the app though that mobile check-in is currently not available. So you'll have to see a cast member when you arrive at the restaurant. So I don't know if that's always or just for today, but mobile check-in is not available. Now to not beat around the bush, the restaurant's expensive. You pay for the experience. I wanna say it's 70 or $79 per adult, but I've heard it's worth it, and then I've heard it's not worth it. We're gonna find out if we think it's worth it or not. That is a very high price to pay for a meal. Now as far as location goes, it's gonna be located over by Mission Space and by Guardians, kind of in that area. So we'll show you exactly where that is at. And I'm not sure if there are annual pass holder discounts. I read online that for lunch, there is slash was. So we'll just have to ask and see for dinner if there are any discounts. The easiest way to find the location is between Connections Cafe and the Creations Shop walk right down the center and you'll almost be looking right at the restaurant. It is extremely busy under here today, probably because it's about 95 degrees, so people are trying to cool off. But if you cross through here and look straight ahead, there's Guardians over that way, Mission Space right in front of us, Test Track over there, kind of gives you a waypoint for this restaurant and with mission space right here over to the right of it it says space 220 looks like we can also preview the menu right on up here here is the sign there's the menu if we are looking at the menu it says see host for reservations i've heard that is effective sometimes we were lucky and got it online but two course lunch it's 55 dollars per person but we're here for dinner so three course dinner and it's 79 dollars per person and you can look at their menu i am not sure what we're going to get but select one of each so select a lift off select a star course and then select a supernova suite. You can see there's the kids menu as well. If we wanna look at the lunch menu, I'll go ahead and show that. It looks like you head right back this way. Other than the price, I am very excited to try this experience out because I've heard a lot of great things about it. So, waited a long time. Um, that is the attraction, so don't go that way unless you wanna get on mission space right here. Turn around the corner and right here is where you check in and as soon as you check in they said just head this way and i guess you had what's it say head in here see what happens and it looks like hello elevate your dining Thank you. Race to space. What'd we get? Our boarding pass. Yeah, he said stand right here. Stand right next to race to space. So currently it looks like you just wait right here. I don't know if they're waiting for more people or whatnot, but looks like we'll be going right into that elevator. Hi. Whoa. 
Welcome aboard this elevator. In just a few moments, you'll be on your way up to Space 220 aboard the Centauri Space Station. Enjoy your ride. Alrighty, my friends, today on our journey, we'll be going up 220 miles above from Epcot at a speed of 10,000 miles per hour. Are we ready? Yes. Yeah. Alrighty, my friends, enjoy the ride. SV2, you are clear. <laughs> Thank you. This is what it looks like on the inside. There's a bar. Looking for your restrooms for those of you that are, oh, right over there to the other side of the bar are the restrooms. Ooh, are we gonna be dining right next to the view here? Maybe? Cool view right there. Oh, there's some astronauts. And we are all the way down here at the end, right here. And the QR code, I'm glad I could show you the menu. QR code is what we'll use for the menu in here. But it's actually really neat looking. That was a cool experience. So 220 because you're going 220 miles above Epcot. Not sure what we're going to get. So the QR code takes you to the menu, which outside I don't know if it showed or not, but they do have quite the menu for beverages, which these ones are not included with your purchase. Um, I think just your generic like sodas and stuff will be included, but quite a bit of drinks on there. Um, I would recommend checking out the menu before you come so that you can have an idea of what you want. But for dinner, we each get a lift off and we're looking at getting um, the Blue Moon Cauliflower and the Big Bang Barada, having both of those. Now the restrooms are over there, like I mentioned. I will be checking them out because Disney does a good job of theming their restrooms. Now I stand corrected, no drink is included besides water. So your Coke products are $4.75, uh, free refills on those, but then no drink is included. So I do see that as being a downfall because all the other places we've been in that have an expensive menu, you get a drink included. It's like a prefix one. Like uh, Be Our Guest. There's a drink included. Any of them. Any of them. But this one you do not. So that is going to be one strike against it. However, a positive is it looks like you're floating out in space here. And occasionally you'll see astronauts and things like that. And the chairs are really comfortable. And temperature's good. I'm not... Are you good on temp? Not too bad in here. Hot day. It is a hot day, yeah. Sorry if it's blurry in here. It is a dark restaurant. Um, looking at the menu, looking at maybe getting a filet mignon, and then maybe the chicken. We're gonna get two different things because we wanna try two different items, but they've got uh, the pad thai maybe, and then we would normally get the salmon, but we just got salmon 
like a couple days ago. So maybe the chicken, there's a short ribs, filet for sure to try that out. And then for dessert, we're maybe thinking carrot cake and the cheesecake, the chocolate cheesecake. We're just gonna stick with waters though because it's already expensive and to add like nine more dollars between two drinks would be a lot of money. So we're just gonna stick with the waters. I think we might make an audible. So for sure the filet, we usually do. For sure the filet, gotta try the filet. The other thing though might be the swordfish. I don't know if we've ever had swordfish, but it's like a seafood platter kind of thing. And instead of just getting the chicken, it might be worth it to try something new. And also they do have these little kids sipper spaceship cups that you can get. So I'm gonna go look at the restrooms, see what they're like. They are over here to the left of the bar. So I have to say the restrooms were a letdown. They weren't themed at all. So that's kind of a bummer. And the other bummer is if you're not sitting right in front of like earth, you're just kind of over here, not having good views of anything. Um, so that's kind of a bummer as well. But even if you are sitting right here in front of the earth, it doesn't really do anything at all. Um, it just is a screen. So nothing really happens. I do like the look and feel of their fork and knife and even the look of their cups. Here's a look at the cauliflower. And here's a look at the burrata. So there's watermelon underneath. That's just a big piece of cheese, right? Lots of little cheese stuff inside. Oh. We're gonna dig in and try both of these. So you've tried some of it? What do you think? Is it good? Yeah, I like it. Oh, good. I'm getting ready to try this. There we go. I have to say, cauliflower's good. Now it's time to try this. Here we go. So that's really good. I have to say both of these liftoffs, I would get again, wouldn't you? Yeah. They're good. I like them a lot. I don't this, know which one I like better. The cauliflower reminds me of Alamo Draft House. Oh, yeah. They used to have a, is it cauliflower wings or something Some, Yeah, like that? buffalo cauliflower or yeah. something. So good. And that reminds me of it. Yeah, and then, the buffalo sauce there. Yeah, and then the cheese, the burrata cheese. If you haven't had burrata cheese, it's yeah. kind of like mozzarella and cottage cheese <laughs> together. It's good though. Cool. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I it's good with the watermelon. I, I enjoy this. Yeah. Oh, that must be the salmon over there. Whoa. Yeah, that's cool. Those were good. Just waiting on the meal now. All right, and here is the filet. So that does look good. And then here's the swordfish, seafood, <laughs> burnt bread. <laughs> what they put on it, mold? <laughs> what is that? I don't know, I didn't read what the bread was. It's like garlic, but that's like garlic oh, yeah. bread. Yeah, I garlic never bread. Seen garlic <laughs> <laughs> uh, mussels, shrimp, scallops, swordfish. So we are going to split both of these. Correction, I said scallops, but I was looking at a uh, potato right there. We got it cooked medium and that looks exactly like it's medium. All right, we're gonna do some rapid fire here. So, mashed potatoes. Those are stinking good mashed potatoes. Top notch mashed potatoes. And then you gotta wait again. Green bean. Also very solid on the green beans. And then the carrot. Believe it or not, that's a flavorful carrot. I like it. Now, the steak. Steak is very tender and very good. So far, the steak plate, I'm gonna slap a stinking good on it. It is really good. Now I'm getting ready to dig into the seafood side of things, but you're trying the, all the steak stuff. You tried the mashed potatoes yet? Curious to see your thoughts. Would you give it a stinking good? Yeah. It's very good. So they did a solid job with the steak. That's not a spaghetti-o. <laughs> that is calamari. How do you feel about that? Not fried? Uh, we'll see. I literally see though, goes down. I literally thought that was a scallop earlier. And you got your moldy bread. So the funny thing is, I actually like almost everything out there. In fact, I like more things than Timber does. However, Timber's more likely to try unique things. So that's why we make, just one of many reasons why we make a really good couple. So. We're gonna dig in with 
calamari first. So that was squishy. However, it tasted really good. I like fried calamari, so that's good. Uh, next is, I guess a mussel? Mussel. So that one, I assume you, you're a mussel eater, so do you like it? It's pretty good. She got it pretty good. It does taste a little oceany, just so you know. I have had better ones, which, where were they? I don't remember. Wasn't it at Stavros? Stavros, yes, the Stavros Italian. Yeah. Next, we will try the clam. It does taste very similar to the uh, mussel. Let's try the wannabe scallop, which is actually just the potato. Potatoes are good, I guess they're they taking the potatoes from living with the land or something. Shrimp. That is good shrimp. And then last but not least, the swordfish. That's also tasty. If I were to choose which plate, I, well, I didn't try the garlic bread. Gotta try the garlic bread. <laughs> garlic bread. That's good garlic bread. If I were to choose though, I would go with the steak. That's some, some of the best steak I've ever had. Seafood though, I, I mean, I would eat it again. I think it's good. It's good. Um, I would want to come back and try everything else, but got to save up for that. Which item do you like the best on this plate? Because you actually said you like the seafood better than the steak. Yeah, that's just my go-to though. Gotcha. Um, the shrimp was very good. And probably, I really like the sauce that they have. It made everything taste good. Yeah, absolutely stuffed. And we still have dessert. I have to say that was stinking good. Here's a look at that carrot cake. Looks pretty good. Now it did say it was plant-based. And then here's a look at that cheesecake, right? Chocolate cheesecake with, oh my goodness. Ninja stars. Oh, how is it? All right, here's a bite of the carrot cake. Delicious. Wow. wow. Now let's try the chocolate cheesecake. Try this first. Not bad, I like the little crunchy things. I don't know. I just and then the chocolate. That's pretty good. I have to say, I think carrot cake wins. It's very good carrot cake. So for dinner, the only discount they offer are for DVC members, Disney Vacation Club members. At lunch, they offer annual pass holder discounts. So this is going to be pricey. But the total... Is expensive. All right, we are all finished up and heading toward the exit. Another look at this. Try not to get in their picture there. Ooh. And then also, I want to say that um, you can, I don't think you need reservations to come up to the bar. I know there's an option for like the lounge. I'm just not sure what you have to do to get to the lounge. And just another look. Before we head out. So this would be, I guess, the lounge slash bar. Might ask if you need reservations or whatever for it, but now we're heading back toward the exit. Look at this, all these wines in here. And then back through this way. Please wait for transport to Earth to arrive. Also, it's currently seven o'clock. Our reservation was for 520. So you can see it takes about, oof, two hours. All right, we are back on here.
you. Back to Epcot. I just asked a cast member about the bar, the lounge, and all that, and he provided great information that we'll go over here in just a second. All right, lots of information thrown at you right now. So we got the reservation for the actual restaurant portion, and that comes with, at the dinner time, the three course meal. Um, sometimes it can take, they were telling me the cast member there, up to two months, or in our case, two years, to get a reservation for. They also offer lounge seating. Lounge seating is still a reservation, so you still have to get a reservation to sit in the lounge. However, they offer an a la carte menu. So not the $79 menu, but a menu where if it's like, sounded like some appetizers or small like- Lounge food. Lounge food. So you're not gonna spend as much money with the lounge as you would at the actual restaurant. There's also a third option, and that is the bar. The bar is first come, first served, and you do not need a reservation for it. He said the average wait at the bar is an hour. Now, when you're at the bar, you get three options. You can just get drinks, you can get the a la carte menu, or you can do the three course meal. So he said the bar one's kind of worth it because they may say it's an hour wait or a 30 minute wait. You're literally just waiting that long and you get to do the same experience that people waited two months to do by getting a reservation to the actual restaurant. So I thought that was very helpful and very interesting. Now, we did have someone ask us to do like a rating system on the restaurants. We're not gonna do that for every single restaurant because that's gonna get pretty complicated. However, I thought it would be kind of cool to do one for this restaurant. There are some negatives. There are some positives. You wanna start with the negatives or the positives? I just have an algorithm going on in my head, so. <laughs> well, you calculate that. Yeah. I will go through a few things. The negatives. Negative is it did take a long time to get a reservation. Negative is once you're actually- so That could be a positive, meaning it's good. True. When you're actually in the restaurant, if you're not sitting right there close to those screens, you really don't have a good view. And the, there's the, the theming in the actual restaurant itself we thought was kind of bland. Like, there's not like much- the tables and the like, I don't know. Everything except for that screen area, like that's it. That's, yeah. That's the money, you know, money, money show, maker, money. yeah. And the screen itself just didn't really do a whole lot. And if you're at the very- At least in our area. If you're at the very side of it, you don't really see much. So that was a downfall. Another downfall is the price, $79, and it does not include a drink. And to go along with that, it does not include an annual pass holder discount for the dinner menu. Those are big negatives in my book. I think, sorry, that's the test track going by. I think you should always get a drink with your meal. It happens at every- standard happens at every other restaurant you can get. I did hear them say this is not a Disney-owned restaurant. Oh, interesting. So as we were walking out, <clears throat> they said that it's not a Disney restaurant. It's I did not know that. So, so that might explain that it. That plays into it, you know. And so. that may explain why the there's not an annual pass holder discount for the dinner. Right. So, interesting. I did not know that. But those are still downfalls in my book. Positive is... I love going in that little elevator thing. That part was really cool. Really cool. They did a great job with that. And then coming back to Epcot. Very cool theming. And the food. The food was excellent. Yeah. Really enjoyed the food. So there's some positives. There's some negatives. Score out of a 10. Do you have one calculated in your oh algorithm? There's so different variables that are weighted in different amounts. I don't know. Like for instance, I would give food a nine and a half out of 10. I liked it that much. Yes, I think the worst thing was probably the cheese. Cream I agree. Because it was more of like a chocolate mousse. Yeah. So it was rich. Yeah. It tasted good still. So if that's the worst thing, then you're not doing bad. Right. But um, everything else was great. Yes. So nine, nine and a half out of ten. Is that what you said? Nine and a half out of ten for the food. The theming. nice restaurant the going up in the elevator really saves it yeah what would so, you give it probably 
I'm always much more harsh. So, I'll look for you. Ooh, so I was at seven and a half and you were at seven, so not far. Um, the price, I'd give it like two. a two, yeah. But, I mean, the food was, the food was good. I would have been mad if we paid that money and the food tasted too. Right. Overall, <laughs> you want to whisper? And service was good. Yeah, service was good. You want to whisper what your overall is or you just want to say it? Just say it. If, you, if you've done your calculation, just say it. Rip the band-aid off. Say it together? Uh, sure. One, count of three. One, One two, two, three. Seven and a half. I thought the food was good. Yeah, so my, my biggest downfall is that is a very expensive meal. And for the price, not getting a drink or a discount, and the theming, like I'm comparing it to Beauty and the Beast, the Be Our Guest. The theming is top notch in Be Our Guest. The food's not as good at Be Our Guest, but you do get an annual pass holder discount and you do get a drink included. Uh, the really and characters. and characters. For some people, that's a plus. So, I'd say if you round it out, we're at seven point seven five. I'd be comfortable just saying seven point five. Would you? Fine. Gotcha. The thing that saves it: the initial launch and the excellent food. If you want to go by food, food was food is good. That is a top restaurant for food. I think that sums it up though now that we've been talking for about five minutes. Hope you learned something from this video. Um, hope you got a good tour of it and we are thankful that we finally got to eat there. With that being said, that does it for today. Thanks for watching.